So you've heard your favorite player talk about how sleep is the secret behind their optimal performance. Maybe you've even heard them talk about how they make sure to get 10 to 12 hours of sleep every day, but you've been sleeping all your life, probably too much at this point, and still don't get what all the hype is about. Well, it's probably because you've not been sleeping right, but that's about to change because you have found the right video. You're about to learn how to sleep like a pro, a pro footballer. To start with, it's easy to think that being a pro footballer is all about skills, agility, and strength. However, while all of that is completely true and is the reason some people have won many Ballon d'Ors and many haven't, there's something else that is not as obvious but is still very important. And that is, you guessed it, sleep. Pro footballers and those that train them recognize that sleep is absolutely important for performing at their peak. For one, because almost every process in our body is taking a break during this period. The body takes the opportunity to repair muscle tissue and top up stamina. The heart is not taking a break though. It keeps working, going through different stages that help to promote a healthier cardiovascular system. Sleep has also been found to improve the brain's ability to retain and remember information, improve the body's reaction time, and just improve overall performance. However, it's actually not enough to sleep. As you probably already know, many people sleep, but not all of them get the same benefits from their shut eye like professional athletes do. So how exactly did these guys sleep? Number one, the sleep schedule. You hear about how important consistency is in every human endeavor. And as a footballer, you definitely have an idea of how important it is to train every day in order to gain mastery. But have you ever considered that consistency is something that you also want to bring into your sleep life? Our bodies are actually designed for a consistent sleep schedule, thanks to something called our circadian rhythm. Each of us has a circadian rhythm that tells us when our body is winding down and ready to sleep, and when it is time to start returning to consciousness. Most of us have been thrown off this course because of life circumstances and our unnatural living environment. But if you want to sleep like a pro footballer, you have to listen to your body on this one. This means going to bed and waking up at the same time every single day, even on weekends. Yes, even on weekends. This consistency helps regulate the body's internal clock, optimizing sleep quality and enhancing recovery. The more you stick with your sleep schedule, the easier it is for your body to trust that you won't run it ragged. And if your body trusts you to do the right thing in that regard, it will perform optimally when you want it to. It just makes sense. Now considering that pro footballers travel regularly and play at all times of the day, you might wonder how they manage to maintain a regular sleep schedule. But what they actually do is they do everything they can to maintain that schedule when it's possible. And it isn't always possible with some late night games or when traveling between different time zones. But when it's not, they make the most of the sleep that they can get by implementing the other strategies that I'll be mentioning later on in this video. Number two, the sanctuary of sleep. It's difficult to say which is more important between your sleep schedule and your sleep environment. And that just shows you how important your sleep environment really is. Footballers and really every athlete, if you think about it, treat their sleep space as a sacred sanctuary. The bedroom or wherever they decide to sleep becomes a haven for rest and recovery, free from distractions and disruptions. Everything in your sleep environment is important from noise level to lighting and even temperature. The pro athletes or their teams and managers invest in some really expensive tech and equipment like sleep chambers because they understand the importance of getting your environment just right. Even if you don't have money to spend on your sleep environment right now, thankfully you don't need to be a millionaire to sleep well. You just need to make the right adjustments to your bedroom. When it comes to lighting, dark is what you want to go for, but dim lights work as well. So installing some blackout curtains over your windows could work, but if that's not possible or it doesn't fit your aesthetics, you could use an eye mask to keep out the light. At this point, it goes without saying that you need to turn your lights off before going to bed. Noise control might be a bit more difficult depending on where you live, but white noise could help block out some of those sudden intrusive noises. There are many white noise sounds on YouTube and there are even white noise smartphone apps, so you could try that as well. But you could also just use your fan or plug your ears just try things out and see what works for you. For temperature, you'd sleep better if the room was too cool than if it was too warm. And it actually has something to do with your circadian rhythm. The temperature of the human body typically starts to drop about two hours before it's time to sleep and then starts to warm up as wake up time approaches. So keeping your room cool helps to reinforce to your body that it is time to sleep. 
making it possible for you to sleep through the night without interruptions. 15 to 21 degrees Celsius or 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit is what experts recommend for your thermostat. You also want to be sure that you're investing in high quality sleep materials. Sure, the right kind of mattress is expensive, but they usually have a long lifespan. So maybe consider investing in one anyway. I mean one that is supportive as well as comfortable. If you've had your mattress for more than 10 years, it's probably no longer doing its job well. So if you can, maybe consider changing it for a new one. Right now, if you're thinking that there's a lot involved in sleeping like a pro footballer, you are not wrong. But actually, these small but significant habits and changes to your sleep eventually become instinctual the more you do them. And over time, you won't even have to think about doing them because you would have mastered the skill of sleeping like a professional athlete. There are other things involved in sleeping as well though. So on we go to technology and wind down rituals. We've already talked about how important it is to have the right sleep schedule and sleep environment. Well, something that you might want to add to your sleeping routine is a wind down ritual of at least 20 to 30 minutes before you go to bed. This ritual could be anything, provided it is relaxing and doesn't involve screens. So you can read a book, but it can't be an ebook. And you could stretch, meditate, or do yoga, but not a full on workout. Relaxing before you go to bed might sound counterintuitive, considering that the purpose of sleep is to relax, but the human body usually needs encouragement to relax, especially when it is tense or agitated. Being tense is our body's way of staying on high alert to make sure that we are able to fight off any attacker. So if you want to relax, you need to get your body to believe that there is no imminent danger. And winding down is the way to do that. Winding down gives your body the opportunity to calm down from the intensity of the day and all the training that you've done. So you can fall asleep quicker and experience a higher quality of sleep so you can wake up refreshed and energized to attack the day, allowing you to get ahead of your competition while they wake up tired, groggy, and run at 50% of their energy potential throughout the day. A wind down ritual can also give your mind an outlet for the intense emotions that you might have accumulated throughout the day and also the tension and emotions you might be feeling for the day ahead, like anxiety, stress, or the pressure to perform at your best in key moments or important matches. And that's important because your mind could be a big hindrance to getting the right kind of sleep. Number four, duration of sleep matters. The amount of sleep you get also contributes to the quality. If you listen to your favorite footballers talk about sleep, you would think that sleep is all that they do when they are not playing a match. Pro athletes typically have between eight and 10 hours of sleep or even more especially after a match. And after running around a football field for close to two hours, not counting all the time they spend training their bodies, their bodies definitely need all the rest that they can get. Of course, it's not always easy to get 10 hours of sleep every day, especially if you also have a day job. And if you're not training as much as a pro footballer, you might not need as much sleep as they do, but you should still try to get as much sleep as you can. The five hours of sleep that you're currently managing to get just doesn't cut it. Aim for at least seven and a half hours of high quality sleep each night because that will give you five full 90 minute sleep cycles to ensure that you get the most restorative sleep possible. Number five, nutrition silent role. The last strategy is one that often goes unnoticed when talking about sleep, but it plays a crucial role. You guessed it, it's nutrition. You probably know not to have things like alcohol and caffeine right before you go to bed, but you actually want to stop having those things earlier than that. Apparently, caffeine has a half-life of about six hours Hours. So that cup of coffee or bottle of beer with dinner might not be a good idea if you want to get good quality sleep. The bottle of beer might be an issue for some people because alcohol actually makes you drowsy. But we're talking about good sleep here, not just any kind of sleep. So ditch the alcohol. The link between nutrition and good sleep goes beyond avoiding caffeine and alcohol a few hours before bed. Pro players know to fuel their bodies with balanced meals that are high in lean protein, complex carbohydrates, and essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. They also avoid heavy and spicy foods close to bedtime so that their bodies are not working overtime trying to digest food when they are just trying to sleep. So if you think you've been doing everything right but have still not been enjoying the benefits of good sleep, you might want to take a look at your diet. Sleep is a more complex topic than we might expect at first, but if you can start applying at least a few of these small habits and changes into your sleep routine, you will be on your way to sleeping like a professional footballer in no time. Now let's get serious bro. Don't tell me you are watching this video at 2 a.m. and destroying your sleep schedule and throwing your circadian rhythm out of balance. Why are you putting off your sleep? Why are you still not prioritizing it? What are you waiting for? It's time to go to sleep so you can wake up refreshed and conquer the day ahead.